Welcome back. You're watching a special Diwali series, Meet the Fund Manager. Now we shift the focus on short-term debt funds. One of the consistent performing funds in this category has been SBI Corporate Bond Fund, which has been able to deliver double-digit returns, even as the category has almost given 9% uh, returns on an average. Uh, let's meet uh, the fund manager, in fact, head of fixed income of SBI uh, Mutual Fund, Rajiv Radhakrishnan, who's joining us. Thank you so much, uh, Rajiv. My first question to you is that uh, as, as far as the SPI corporate fund is concerned, it has been able to give consistent double-digit returns. What is it that has really worked for the fund? I would like to start with the uh, basic mandate of the fund. Uh, the mandate of the fund is to actively uh, identify uh, credits and follow a very active uh, credit uh, allocation strategy. So we would always have a core portfolio of about 42 uh, 70 percent in uh, AA and A rated bonds wherein now uh, we seek to uh, act, you know, actively identify credits that can outperform over a period of time. So if you purely ask it, uh, one of the main factors that would have driven the performance in this uh, product, I would say it is the uh, active credit selection that we have done. Uh, secondly, uh, there have been a few instances of few cases where uh, we've been able to identify credits that have actually tightened in terms of spreads, largely arising out of rating upgrade actions as well. And the third factor uh, for the performance or the outperformance of the fund over a period of time uh, has been our uh, uh, active uh, uh, sectoral calls as well. So in terms of either uh, staying away from certain sectors that have uh, come under stress of late, or in identifying sectors uh, in ahead of the market in terms of uh, over a period of time the uh, credits in those sectors have actually tightened in terms of spreads so it's a combination of both that probably would have uh, helped the fund uh, in its performance so as you point out uh, rajiv uh, in terms of certain sectoral sectors that you have stayed away from and certain sectors that you probably have managed to time well take us through whatever what has been the sectoral calls uh, that have that you have taken or at least those which you have really refrained yourself from so in terms of uh, sector that we have sort of stayed away uh, the commodity sector that probably comes uh, to my mind uh, uh, as you know, uh, that's one space where uh, due to global as well as domestic factors, uh, we've seen uh, significant stress across. There have been a few instances of uh, uh, downgrades in that space. So across our funds, actually, we have avoided exposure to commodities. Um, that's uh, the sectors that we're probably we've uh, uh, you know, stayed away from. And in terms of uh, exposure uh, and actively identifying sectors, ahead of the market. Uh, I would say that we've been probably one of the earliest uh, investors uh, in microfinance. Uh, as you know, regulatory environment surrounding that sector has significantly changed over the last few years. A lot of entities in that space have got uh, licensed to operate as uh, payment banks. Uh, so these are, uh, this is probably one sector that has probably seen a positive change at the margin in terms of the overall operating environment. Rajiv, could you give us a sense in terms of uh, the interest rate scenario? Uh, we've seen the debt funds are really having great returns in the last few years as we were headed for a downward trajectory in terms of interest rates. Now that there is a belief that perhaps there's going to be a pause, uh, where do you see really the A, your view on the interest rate side? And also, secondly, as far as uh, the returns that one is getting from debt funds, where do you see, uh, do you think that they will remain attractive? See, as you rightly mentioned, uh, uh, over the last couple of years, uh, debt funds have done very well on the back of capital gains uh, arising out of uh, uh, interest rate uh, cuts from the RBI. Uh, uh, we still maintain a medium-term positive view on interest rates. Uh, we feel that uh, uh, the conditions have been laid down for a very structural downshift in inflation in India, given uh, both the policy actions from the government as well as from the RBI. So we still believe that over a period of time, investors who have the appetite for duration exposure, there is still uh, a benefit to be had by having uh, exposure to long-term funds. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, there are medium-term challenges. Uh, over the next uh, couple of months, uh, uh, the, uh, the U.S. Fed is uh, expected to start its policy normalization. Uh, that probably would have some impact on how uh, uh, flows pan out uh, to emerging markets. So it will have its impact on the currency as well as uh, interest rates in our domestic market. Uh, the second factor is that the RBI, after having cut policy rates 
uh, uh, by 125 basis points, they would want to uh, wait out and see the impact of its uh, previous actions uh, uh, on the market. And the third factor that probably would call for a near-term pause would be the uh, near-term uh, trajectory of CPI inflation. So, uh, so these three factors probably would call out for a, a near-term pause in policy rates, but uh, over a period of time since the broad conditions for uh, uh, a structural decline in inflation have been uh, more or less met, uh, we would still believe that long-term funds would have a, a, a very good uh, uh, future as regards uh, potential investments. Uh, but um, I would say that for, uh, uh, let it be for any interest rate cycle, or rather more uh, importantly the way the uh, rates are uh, at this point in time, I think uh, investors who do not have that duration appetite, uh, funds like short term fund or credit opportunity fund which actually have a lower duration, they would have a very important part in the portfolio. Uh, with today uh, the AAA uh, uh, short term rate still above 8%. Uh, apart from that, there are a lot of opportunities <coughs> to be had by uh, selective exposure to credit. So uh, that particular category, I would believe, uh, would have a, a lot of uh, traction going forward in terms of being a very good viable investment option over the uh, very near term or maybe even on a long term basis. Uh, I think uh, there is a very good rationale for investment in short-term income funds. Rajiv, uh, what about, uh, you know, as far as the corporate bond market is concerned, it gives a sense as, uh, with regard to the corporate health and therefore want to get a sense uh, with regard to that, that how are you viewing the corporate health and also, more importantly, uh, the government spending story. How is it panning out? The signals that we get from uh, probably you know uh, the credit markets today is that uh, I would say it's la rather largely mixed uh, because even today uh, across the sectors you know there are still a few sectors where the credit markets are not that well developed. You do not have too many issuances there. This is probably uh, still a concentration from a couple of sectors. Uh, but uh, broadly, I think in terms of uh, indicators. Uh, there could be a few uh, sectors uh, which could still uh, face a bit of stress. I mentioned commodities earlier, the entire infrastructure space probably. We don't have too many issuers uh, from that space, so very difficult to actually really uh, 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 have any uh, clear-cut indicator coming out of that space. But I think as and when the market develops, we have far more issuances coming from uh, f uh, much more diverse sectors. I think the information flow would be uh, uh, far more efficient. Rajiv, my last question to you is, uh, you know, in the last few months, uh, we've seen some sort of concerns uh, emanating uh, with regard to the papers uh, that the debt funds have invested in, uh, uh, not talking about a case, a specific case here, but on in general, uh, do you see that there is a concern right now in terms of the way and, you know, with the market regulator also looking into it in the way the portfolio, in the, uh, in the availability of the paper, in the availability of a good paper, all those concerns that one is viewing right now, what is your, uh, what, what is your stance? Uh, so you are right, uh, of course, uh, uh, we have seen an instance in the recent past uh, of a particular credit. Uh, I think the impact of that would probably uh, eventually in, will be in terms of uh, regulations getting tighter at the margin. So uh, I believe uh, the regulator is looking into uh, one, probably the sectoral exposure norms and second, the single uh, issuer exposure norms that are allowed at present. Uh, some of those norms anyway have been uh, in existence for a while. Probably there would be a case for uh, revising it at the margin. But I believe uh, uh, eventually uh, 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 it's uh, rather the internal processes that is followed at each of the fund house on the individual level that sort of uh, 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 segregates uh, between various funds in terms of what uh, credit exposures they take. Uh, for example, internally uh, our exposure norms have been much stricter than what has been allowed by the regulation. Uh, so for example, uh, SEBI allows 15% single uh, issuer exposure. Uh, we've been keeping it under 10% across our funds. Uh, we have internal uh, templates that sort of determine to what extent uh, we can take exposure to certain sectors. So all of them are much tighter than uh, what the regulatory uh, norms currently uh, allow you. Uh, but uh, broadly speaking, uh, I believe uh, there could be changes in terms of exposure and to the extent that uh, it sort of uh, uh, brings in far more better discipline, I think it's good for the overall uh, growth of the industry. 
and today probably uh, compared to what it was a few years back or when the regulations were uh, initially framed uh, in terms of uh, issuances there are far more uh, 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 probably a big lot more names lot more sectors who probably issue today uh, so probably yes there is a case for a marginal uh, tightening of regulations on that space all right uh, rajiv thank you so much for joining us and sharing your views uh, with regard uh, to the way forward as far as the debt uh, fund uh, markets are concerned and uh, debt funds are concerned really in terms of trajectory there thank you so much uh, for joining us on this uh, special series uh, rajiv thank you well that's all on this special series where we got you to meet the fund managers of some of the top performing debt funds thank you so much for watching